Please hit the like button. Did they ever have one of those? Oh, yeah, like on uh, YouTube there is. Oh. No. But, like, I'll test it for you right now. We're good. Are we good now? All right. Cool. We got it fixed. Appreciate everybody. Thanks for the heads up. That was actually Sybil saying, hey, the audio is effed. Again. Is it effed again? No, we're good now. Oh, we're good. All right. I'm Colby Sapp, and that guy that's now fixing the audio is is one IndyCar Tim Ham. What's up, Tim? Hello, friends. Colby, it's almost Masters Week. It is almost Masters Week. Hey, you know what? My volume's up on my phone. <laughs> I was, I was like, I sound good wherever I am. There we go. That's That was me actually making sure we were fixed and ready to go. So we've got a great show for you. Before I get into anything about the show, though, I have to tell you, I had an experience about a week ago that I Uh-oh. need to talk to everybody about. I am one of those that I look for foods that have a lot of protein in them. I'm looking for different ways to sneak protein into my diet because I am I am a huge carb fiend. So, like, protein chips, protein mm-hmm. bars, uh, cereal. Cereal is, like, my favorite thing on the planet. So, I was, at, I was at a Kroger's, and I happened across this cereal I have right here. This one. It's the worst. Um, and Tim doesn't even know how worst it is because he's no. actually going to get to try some of this. So, I made me a bowl of this. By the way, it's called... Um, Eat your mouth off. I'm not telling you that to go buy it. I'm not unless you're planning on making a practical joke on somebody. Um, I made the bowl and I sat down and I was, you know, playing video games. And I sat down with my cereal and I got my big cereal spoon, right? And I put it in the bowl and I put it to my mouth. And I've never had this experience. This is one you're going to miss out on tonight because we don't have any milk for you to I was enjoy. wondering if you had milk for me. I would have brought some if I'd known you were doing this. I, I, no, no. I, this was this was uh, not thinking and just walking out the door. It's like, no, Tim has to try this crap. All right. All right. So I uh, put the spoon into my mouth, and the milk disappeared. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it. It just, it was like, is it pop? <laughs> just just, just fizzles away. Just evaporated. And all that was left in my mouth was styrofoam peanuts. Huh. And I am not one that has any type of texture. This was a different flavor that you tried, not the chocolate, yeah, right? Th- I actually brought you the better of the two. Right. Uh, the fruity version of this, eat your mouth off. <laughs> Again, a that, that, name. that made it past a focus group. But also, I can't complain too much because I bought it. Um, yeah, so um, the the yeah the the fruity one was oh god it was it was awful like the aftertaste and the styrofoam was I I couldn't finish a bowl of it. Now this oh. is me. This is I can eat just about anything. Seriously, uh-huh. I don't have texture. We've had this conversation. I don't have texture issues. I don't have nothing. I'll I'll make do with what's in front of me. I am fine, right? This, this, 
caused me to not be able to finish a bowl of cereal, which has never been done. <laughs> even with the big spoon. Even with the big spoon has been never been done in the history of cereal. I've and I've had some bad quote bad cereal. No. Nah. Mm-mm. So I'm going to go walk in and hand this to Tim so that he can get him a handful and shove this in his mouth. When are we doing it? We're doing this right now. Oh, right now? I thought you want to do it like coming out of the first bre- the first hour. No, 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 no. Okay. No, no, no. All we're, right. we're, we're doing this now. So Let's I'm going to step back as Tim now tells you what's coming up on the show. Notice how I delayed that so we could do that here because I'm smart. It's going to be a really big show for everyone, a really big show. No, we're excited about today's show as we are about every Monday and Wednesday. By the way, happy hump day. I can finally say that accurately because it is hump day. I'm going to go full screen here so everybody can see what's happening here behind the scenes. Um, We've got some Texas Rangers talk as they have a notable loss, Colby, uh, from the World Series team. And when I say notable, it might be the most notable loss that they could possibly suffer uh, with the exception of Adolis Garcia. We'll get into that here in about 20 minutes. Also, the MLB Power Rankings entering the 2024 season as the season for the Rangers kicks off. To, sorry, it doesn't kick off. I guess it first pitch offs tomorrow. I don't know if that's what it's called. The, the first, first pitch, pitch off. off. <laughs> it first pitch offs tomorrow uh, as the Rangers open against the Cubs. That's really weird that they're opening against the Cubbies. Hmm. Um, well, they opened against hey. the, the Phillies last year, right? I know. I don't know why they got to open against NL teams. It just seems stupid. Well, I mean, it's just give me baseball at this point. Just give, just give me baseball. I'm so ready. Uh, then after that, of course, we have your good, bad, and ugly Facebook and celebrity birthdays for everybody to enjoy. That that always turns into a S show for for everything. And then we have a very special after school list for everybody. As Wednesday is list day, Monday is, of course, Mystery Shotgun Day at the 805 segment. This week, Colby, a special treat I picked just for you. Mm. The top 10 most powerful movie monsters of all time. I can't wait. With visual aids. And I will tell you, like, I'm not a big movie monster guy comic. Oh, these aren't comic book things, but I, some of them I think have appeared in comic books. But more than half of these I've never heard of. Oh, this should be fun then. So it'll be fun for you because I'm sure you've heard of all of them. Uh, and then we've got solar eclipse talk. Is there is talk about the solar eclipse on April 8th, the day after my birthday, um, dooming the state of Texas. Oh dear. There might be terrible things happening during the four minute solar eclipse. It's all going to be nighttime. <sighs> there are things that could happen. And also Colby, we like to talk about scientific medical, uh, progression and experiments and new technology, right? Yep. Well, we had our first neural link brain transplant. I didn't see this, so this was also in news and notes, but so we we're doubly going we to We found it. it from the same source, I'm sure. Right. We both go to that same site when we need stories. So you'll get a double dose of neural link brain transplant talk as we wrap up the 825 segment and head into the 845 Colby Saps world famous news and notes. All right, Colby. So what am I supposed to do here? We probably need music going. Well, I mean, you can take music. You you can Is not it okay take for music. me to keep casually sexting. I mean, oh, you, that's not music. You, so, let me um all you need to do is just get you a handful of them. Not just one or two cuz one or two will fool you. You need a handful. Okay, can I taste like just one first? If I promise to do a handful too? Okay, sure. Okay, first of all, let me tell you this. Look, I know and I totally respect what you've done with your body transformation and the way you've done it, right? With diet right, and, and working out. You've lost about 900 pounds over the last four years that, that I've been watching you do this. But, and I, I'm all for that. I need to lose about 900 pounds myself right, just okay. to fit into some clothes. And I really want to, but I clearly don't have the willpower you do. But I will tell you this. If this was one of the things that was presented to me that I need to eat... Just looking at the box, I would say, no, find me something else. Do you want to know why? Why is that? Because this right here. The plant-based? Anytime I see something that says 100% plant-based, well, I am out. Okay, it's cereal. I don't expect animal parts in my cereal. I'm going to be quite honest. And this part right here. Oh, other hand. Right there. Oh, it's, oh zero grams of added sugar. That's all cereal is, is sugar. It, it's not all that it has to be, right? 
All right. How do I do this? Just, I mean. I don't know where these hands have been. I mean, well, they're your hands. <laughs> I know you think I did, huh? What's up, Jared? He joins the show again. Jared Rumbelo. Colby is hot now. Yeah, he is. Appreciate that. Working That's what I've been hard. saying the whole time. Um, he used to, No, Colby was always hot. No, that's, he was just a hefty hot. Oh, okay. You were a BBW hot. <laughs> I don't know if that's the proper description on that, but there you go. Now you're just, like, I guess normal hot. All right, so is this handful enough? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. good? Yeah. I feel like I've got... God, they're very light and airy. Yes, they are. Exactly like what they you They smell think. good, though. Oh, yeah, they smell like, like, you know, Cocoa Pebbles, man. Kind of does, yeah. yeah like no. little hollow uh, Hershey's Kisses. All right, are we ready? Yeah, go ahead. All right. How's that? What's that like? Is that the stalest corn puffs you've ever had? Is that, did you just put packing peanuts in your mouth? You just put packing peanuts in your mouth, didn't you? Colby? No? Are you okay with this? It sounded like the, the Colby and then about to be okay with this. Hmm. Is that not the... That, okay. No, wait a minute. Wait for it. So initial reaction... Right. As I begin chewing... Oh, that's the part. Oh, this is not bad at all. And then you start. But then I start chewing. Uh-huh. And I feel like I'm eating cardboard. Yeah. It's bad. Like, texture and taste. That initial wave of chocolatey goodness fades very quickly. And now I do, I have paper mache in my mouth. Like, yes. with glue and everything. Uh-huh. Like, like the, the exact, exact. Like, the milk disappears. I don't have a trash can. The milk disappears, and then... Yeah, it's it's it it goes from I think that's the worst part about it. It goes from hey, this is cereal. Hey, it tastes like cereal. Mm -mm, so it's not. And then it's just it's oh, it's real bad. And now I have to swallow it. Yeah, you've got well, I mean, look at that. I mean, that was what a quarter of a cup. That was what five gra five grams of protein you had there, bud. Am I skinny now? No. Oh, that's not. <laughs> I had five grams. I don't know what that means. That's oh, no, dude, if this is what it takes to get skinny, I'm out. I'll just be fat the rest of my life. Well, the other thing, I mean, like meals that I had today. Like, you tried my uh, chicken and rice. No, I and I would eat that. I, like, if I was on my mission to get back down to 220, which is where I want to be. Okay. I could eat that. Like, that could be my lunch every day or dinner or whatever. Yeah. Like, because it tasted good. Not a big fan of the texture, but you know what? That texture... I can get past. Once once you get into your brain, like with the cauliflower, I'm sorry, what I had for dinner today was uh, cauliflower rice and chicken. And that's what I made. But I made it uh, barbecue style. And now Tim's never going to be able to think about that again because he's had that cereal. Look, There's I guarantee you that chick right there, ain't ha she's, she's not eating the cereal. She's not actually putting that in her mouth. Uh-uh. That's bad. Oh, dude, that's... That is bad, dude. That is horrible. I need a need a chug of my vodka right now to make it go away. So I guess this is our little word to the wise out there, everybody. Don't don't buy that. I, I mean, unless they want to sponsor. I, I think I think I think we've lost all sponsorship for dude. Eat your mouth off, serious. Because again, I put a huge. You saw how much I put a huge amount in my mouth, right? right. Try to do your 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 test here justice. And when I put it in there, I just start soaking in the chocolate. Before I started chewing, I was like, oh, wait, no, this isn't bad. But then I started chewing, and it turned quickly. Yes. See, that's that's the thing. If you just, because what I did was, is I just tried one or two of them, and before, you know, I made the cereal, I was like, this will work, right? Because you don't have time, because you, you try it, chew, swallow, and it's done, right? There's not a mouth full of them. Oh, yeah, mouth By the way, that bad. food test brought to you by Turf Life at turflife.club. It's definitely not <laughs> brought to you by Eat Your Mouth Off cereal. Because it tastes like turf. Mm. So, so there's Dude, that, that was bad, Colby. Like, I don't... 
Now it's stuck in my teeth. Yeah, and the other side of it is, is the fruity one was worse. Oh. So much worse. So, uh. this is what we do for you guys. <laughs> so, you, so you don't have to. Yeah, it's stupid stuff like that. <laughs> for there. the love of God, that was bad. So there we are. Hey, Tim. Hey, Colby. Hey, what day is it today, bud? Might as well just keep the music up. Yeah. Hey, thanks for asking, Colby. I appreciate that. It's always nice when you throw things to me that that are mine. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted to start, what day is it, with a little bit of audio. Holy crap. So you left the music going to play audio? This is totally throwing me off. So I'll bring the music down, because we were just talking about this as we play this. And there we go. I'm surprised you to listen to it for uh, Anyway, so yes, um, my new my new foray, my new mission is going through the Unticket website, and I'm gonna pull all the norm drops because he said I could start putting them in his show. Nice. Uh, even the underwear drops, and we've got some pretty famous norm. So, for those of you as we get into what day it is, for those of you that don't know, if I don't know how you don't know by now, but. The great Norm hits. I almost said the late great Norm. <laughs> Don't kill Norm. The great Norm Hitzkiss is now on Fanstream Sports uh, with his daily podcast. Just, just wondering. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. Um. So there is a possibility that he might do some draft coverage for us this year. If not this year, then one hundred percent it's happening next year. Also, he may be going to the Super Bowl Radio Row with us, Colby. By the way, in case you haven't heard us, when we screamed about it when we first knew it, we're going to the Super Bowl. We have we have a table at, on Radio Row at the Super Bowl in New Orleans in 2025. And Norm's going to be sitting at the table with us, Colby. That's amazing. Jeez, my, my football nipples are hard right now. Um, I forgot where I was going with this. Was it? Oh, he gave me permission to put some of the old ticket norm drops on his episodes. And then he was like, damn groups. <laughs> it was great. We had, we had lunch. If y'all didn't see the uh, my obvious boasting with my post on social media Friday. Also, also, if you haven't checked out the Just Wondering, not to get too far into it, he did a episode where he went to the Blind Cow. In Zurich, in Switzerland. In Zurich. And it's about his experience. Now, now, apparently, there are no lights on in this place because it's run by uh, run by the blind. And his experience that are in there where him and Mary basically couldn't see their food, see themselves, see anything. Anything. And, and you ate there. Yeah. Which threw Tim completely off because he likes to look at his food. I do. Well, you heard what Mary said in the episode. She didn't even know if she finished her food because she couldn't see it. That's when you take whatever bread is there and do a, a sop test, and if there's no, oh. nothing running up against it. So you guys go over to the uh, the Fanstream Sports YouTube page. Norm Norm's uh, podcast is video as well. You can see it at fan, or here at FanStreamSports.com, but Norm on video is amazing because he hadn't done it in a long time since he was the anchor on Channel 4 News in the early 80s Right here locally in Dallas. So he loves the fact that we're doing video for him now, and he eats it up. The camera loves him uh, and Mary, and they do a lot – do a lot of stuff for us. Go check it out on our YouTube channel, Fanstream Sports. Um, and then the Blind Cow episode from today, it's just amazeballs. Um, and we're going to do a segment on that here probably shortly uh, about that whole experience and if we could do that or not, what our thoughts are on it. But, Colby, as far as today, I have to wish you Happy Manatee Appreciation Day. Dude, these are majestic creatures. They are. They are I feel especially like I've dated one or two. Especially when, you know, when they come home and they put on the sweats. <laughs> no, not that. Oh no. Uh, no, you're right. Yeah. It's like I was married to at least one of them. Well, what was that that we found? It was it was at uh it was the manatee gray. It was, yes. it was a color of an actual s- sweatsuit yep. called manatee gray. It's just no. Huh. Anyway, sorry about I don't know. I can't remember the whole story because my brain, that file cabinet's shut. It is. It is. And that's that story. Let's move on to the next story. That's a perfect drop. (laughs) Colby, happy National Spanish Paella Day. Ah, paella. You probably like paella. Oh, is it paella? Paella. 
Oh, you make paella with saffron. That's one of the main ingredients, yes. You know why I said paella? Because I've never seen the word paella written out. <laughs> I didn't realize that's what that was. Like, I know what it is and I've had it. But I didn't realize he spelled it, like, weird like that. Paella, you know who... I like paella. Who boasted that uh, that they made uh, the greatest paella? Who? I, I, it's KNC... Producer and it wasn't DJ. Parker? Parker. Ah, ah. Where's Parker these days? He's not in Houston anymore, right? I, he's running something somewhere. Colorado? He's big wig. No, that was Colorado and then Houston, right? Yeah. Probably doesn't have time for us anymore. No, our I mean, I could call him. Shenanigans. Colby, happy American Red Cross Giving Day. So it's where you give to the Red Cross or where Red Cross goes out and gives stuff? I don't think they give to anybody that's not in need. Okay. I mean, but they do give to people. So and I'm not they, sure they even give then. <laughs> they're just out there Robin Hooding. It's stealing from the rich and keeping for themselves. I know, giving to the poor. That's what I would do. I'd that's be a just, good Robin Hood. That's not Robin Hood. And that's just being a robber. <laughs> robber Hood. <laughs> that's his cousin, Robber Hood. He didn't quite get the message. No, he didn't get the full. Like the last part of the what they were doing, it was ripped off the bottom of the page. And right. he just he just rolled with it. Damn it. <laughs> Somebody needed that particular thing for toilet paper. Uh, Colby, I'm shocked that you're not celebrating this today. Right in front of me with a glass of of it. Because this is the thing that I associate you probably the most with in the whatever. Ten years that I've known you. I've probably known you longer than you've known me. <laughs> that makes sense to anybody. But... The entire time I've been familiar with you as a person, I've associated you with this, and there's not one in front of you, but it is International Whiskey Day. Whiskey time! That's you. Actually, it still says that on, like, the back of my hat because somebody made this for me, and it's, that yeah. No, and I will quickly drink some whiskey on you. Not right now, and not... As much anymore, but that's because I don't keep it at the house. Why? Because I'll, Tim, I'll drink it. I like whiskey. Oh. Well, see, I don't drink it home. I drink it at the studio. But you got a long drive, too. Yeah. But you could have one or two. I could. You understand, though. And maybe now I, I, I could have one or two and be all right. But used to was one or two was just enough to make sure that I had five or six. Oh, no, I'm aware. That's how vodka is for me. I'm on number four oh. right now because I did an hour golf show before we did this. So, I, and it was I, I I started you know I drink with a mission and the mission was to not be sober. Yeah, at all as we often do. So I forgive you, uh, Colby. It is also I don't know if this is correlated to International Whiskey Day. It's National Little Red Wagon Day. <laughs> Tim, did you ever have a wagon? So freaking lootly, I had a wagon. I had the radio flyer. I I had a it was a it was a red wagon, and then I had the for a little bit the John Deere wagon. Uh huh. I had both of those, and the wagon would go with me everywhere. Yep. So my thing with my wagon was when I was I don't know five six years old, I would put our two dogs in the wagon and walk them around the block. I would just put different toys in it yeah i wouldn't force the the monkey or anything to get in the wagon uh we should have had the great uh jeff skin almost said ben skin wade that was weird okay <laughs> the great jeff skin wade on to talk about this because it is national acoustic soul day does that not describe skin almost like do a t musically i no well I mean, to me, it does. It kind of does, but I always think of Skin, and I think of he knows all the bands that nobody else cares about. And like, if he tells you about a band... And then it's probably really good. And it's a band, and you're like, oh, yeah, no, I know them. He immediately loses interest, and he will no longer like that band. True. Because it's not his band anymore. He's like, oh, other people listen to this? Oh, I'm out. I'm out. See you. Well, see you later. Big gulps, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, Colby, happy National Joe Day. Favorite Joe. I know who my least favorite is. 
Um, Dirt. Joe Dirt. <laughs> Montana. Uh, the one that came to mind, because it's only Joe, it's Joe from Family Guy. Oh, he's the one in the wheelchair, right? Hey, Joe. And then, yeah. <clears throat> okay. All right. No, it's just, I haven't watched that in forever. I, I get it. Huh. Uh, Colby, how about... Oh, well, that died. Hap- <laughs> I mean, did you have more Joes? No. Uh, 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 I mean, stopped. it's okay if you do. That story. Let's move on to the next story. Let's do that. Whatever I just said. Let's do that. Colby, happy National Medical Science Liaison Awareness and Appreciation Day. Man, fuck that day. I don't even know what that person does. Okay, I don't know what their sexual preference has to do with anything. What, where is that at? I didn't even hear that. We recognize all medical science liaisons from the world today. I mean, I don't care what their sexual preference is. Uh, wait, you... You, so is your brain telling you that a liaison is somebody that's... Isn't that two chicks? <laughs> With two chicks or scissoring? They're liaisoning? They're liaisoning. <laughs> National Medical they're Science liaison. They're, they're ex- sexually attracted to those uh, aliens from Battlestar Galactica. Oh. Liaison. Bobby, your command. <laughs> I just cracked myself up. Four people that got my joke. Appreciate you. Yours was great. Uh, gosh, I should save that for last. Uh, Colby, how about Happy Quirky Country Music Song Titles Day? Don't stop my heart. <laughs> my achy, breaky heart. Oh, God. There's so many. We should have prepared better. Just don't think you didn't understand. Happy Whole Grain Sampling Day. I feel like I just did that. I mean, sure. You did. You did. Apparently, because, I mean, it's plant protein, so. Uh, And then finally, Colby, our last one that I was saving. We probably should have done this together to start the show. Mm -mm. Oh, I feel like, okay, next year on March 27th, I'm marking down in the Colby Sapp and IndyCar Tim Show calendar. We're going to do this together at the beginning of the show and then see where we're at at the end of the show. Because by then, we might be three hours in the middle of the day. Right. Because it is National Viagra Day. Yeah, no. uh -uh. Let's both take a Viagra to start the show. No. And then uh -uh. see where we're at at the end of the show. No, I'm not not (laughs) doing a whole show with a pup tent. What? Why not? You can sit down. Wait, Jared Jared had a good point earlier that we missed. Isn't all cereal plant-based? No, it's sugar-based. No, no, he's right. I mean, he's right, right? I mean, yeah, some of them do have... Corn and wheat? Semblance of eggs and stuff in them, but... I didn't think of that. It just, when I see something is plant-based, it just makes me shiver. Shiver me timbers. Well, if it's plant-based, but it's supposed to taste like meat, then probably it's better if you just went and ate the meat. Yeah. Don't, don't mark. mark that. Mark. Eat the meat. Eat the meat. Man, am I already tired? I'm already starting to slip into Taste the meat, not Taste the it. heat. Taste it real good. Oh, Jesus Christ. What's wrong with you? I don't know. Mm-hmm. And then we'll have birthdays coming up here because I've got some birthdays here, Colby. Woo. That I hope are on your list. If they're not, I'm adding them. Okay. Because I've got probably three at least notables here on my list. I've got some notables All on right. the list. Like, I've, And one of them's really big. Yeah. Uh, that's what probably she, not probably not the one that you're thinking. That's what she said. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, very good. There's your uh, what day is it today for Wednesday? Which to- Colby takes us into the sports report. I'm trying to find our little intro here. There it is. Uh, Colby, we're both huge Rangers fans, and we were at Rangers supporters and fans in the. In the not so great days, right? Like, oh, yeah. that's one of the teams that your dad told you you had to be a fan of, right? And Correct. so you were. Uh, exactly. <clears throat> I mean, that's good enough reason for me. That's the only, I mean, that's the reason why every every the only team he didn't choose for me was because the Dallas Stars weren't here by yeah. at that time, right? So, and you didn't have a well, no, you did have a hockey team though, right? You said you liked the North Stars. When I when I realized that hockey was a thing, it took me a little bit longer. To realize that hockey was a thing that was cool to watch 
And yeah, I picked the Minnesota North Stars because I huh. thought their green jerseys were cool. And then my team moved to me. Yeah, and they came to you. You didn't have to move. Mm-hmm. That's amaze balls. <laughs> I was like, wow, I just ran because you would never think that you would randomly pick a Minnesota team. I right. I just did. Nothing happens good in Minnesota ever. No. Minnesota. Don't you know? You going with? Shut up. With where? With what? What are you talking about? You? <clears throat> Colby, I used to be a waiter at um, Black Eyed Pea, the great Black Eyed Pea restaurant. How do these connect? I'm about to tell you. All right. And I think this is more of a southern thing, not a northern thing. So you're familiar with chicken fried steak. Yep. Chicken, chicken. fried chicken. Mm-hmm. They're both separate things. They are both separate. Different things. proteins. Yeah. Cooked similarly, battered similarly. Right. And but different proteins. Yes, and also chicken fried chicken is not fried chicken. It's no. a different. And if something is chicken fried. It is a different process than just frying chicken. Correct. We know that because we're Southern. Mm -hmm. Colby, I can't tell you how many times I would walk up to a table. Of course, Black Eyed Peas specialized in chicken fried chicken, chicken fried steak. We even chicken fried our corn on the cob. I know this. And it was amazeballs. It was pretty good. I would walk up to a table and I'd have it. And there was always old people. I'll have your chicken fried. What? I said, okay, what? Your chicken fried. Okay. What? And they'd look at me like I was stupid. I just told you, I want your chicken fried. Okay, we don't have fried chicken. You got to go to KFC for that, bitch. I don't know why you had to get that kind of vulgar with them. (laughs) Because it pissed me off. So, yeah, and so... When I would finally get it out of them, they meant chicken fried chicken. Just but so say chicken. Right. Man, it used to and okay, as as cynical as I am now, at fifty two, almost fifty three, I'm two weeks away from fifty three, Colby. Dear sweet God, you're an old man. Could I die soon? Probably. As cynical as I am now, imagine seventeen, eighteen year old Tim. I know I wouldn't, because you know what would have happened if it was 17, 18-year-old Tim and whatever 12-year-old Colby walked up to that guy, 12-year-old Colby would immediately want to fight you. And you know what? Probably would have kicked my ass. At that, Yeah, because I was also <laughs> no-holes-barred Colby at right. that time. I didn't care. That always irrit- that still irritates me, and because I, I still don't freaking know what they meant half the time. I'd use whatever's beside me to whip your ass with it. I like where the sports report is going. This is good. Uh, Colby, the Texas Rangers are down a guy from the World Series roster. Not just any guy. They're down maybe your most important piece of the pitching staff from last season as Jordan Montgomery. Yeah, it's not the most important guy. Oh, I think he was. No, that would be that would be a big game, Nate. Sir. I would not argue that point. I think Montgomery set the tone for their playoff run in that game he started against the Rays in the wild card round. Not just with his pitching performance, but with his defensive performance. Oh, yeah. You no. Remember him diving for that ball on the first baseline like it was going to win the World Series for them? I feel like that set the tone. It did set the tone, but I, it, and maybe I'm... Maybe I'm the only one that thought or felt this while you were watching some of the Rangers in that process, like like watching or hearing Scherzer talk or hearing Montgomery talk. It always felt like those guys were mercs. They uh-huh. were mercenaries. They were just here, and they were already, you know, they, they liked the guys that were there in the clubhouse right. and whatever, but they weren't fully, like, wrapped up into the team. They were just here to do a job. Yeah. That's what the, that's that's what he felt like to me, and, and you know, of course, you know the other guys that were, you know from John Gray to Nate Evaldi to every all the other, they felt like they were there as as part of the, this is their thing, this is their whole team. So, yeah. I'm so not, not surprised. So, you know, Jordan Montgomery came at the trade deadline. Yep. At the same time, Scherzer did, in separate deals. We got Mon- Montgomery first, and then Scherzer. I think you know right around the next day. 
And I remember at the time, like, oh, okay, Jordan Montgomery. All right. He's had a nice season up in, in uh, St. Louis. Like, he'll be a good depth guy. He'll be a good third or fourth starter as we try to get, make the playoffs, right? Uh-huh. Oh, no. He was just badass, dude. He, he was he was nails. Signed a one-year, $25 million deal with the Diamondbacks, the team that we beat in the playoffs, in the World Series. Which yeah. is confusing to me because I feel like the Rangers could have strung together $25 million for one year. I think they could have, too, but... You look at the way this season looks like it's going to go. You're going to get through, you know, the first half of the season. Then second half, you start getting your armament thrown right. in. And if it goes the way last season did, the first part of the season was all about how you were just killing everybody offensively. You, It didn't matter. You were scoring however many runs. Yeah, right. you had a little bit of a rough start, which it looks like this could happen again. But this lineup actually looks better than it did last year. Right currently, as it stands right now, the lineup actually looks more potent than last year. Than going into the season last year. Yeah, I know. I agree with that, yeah. So, I'm all right with it. I'm good. Plus, there's there's not a whole lot that the Texas Rangers could do right exactly right right now that would make me go, oh, because you won the World Series. I don't know. Resigning Montgomery to me would have been a – that would have been an oh, yes moment for me. I'll be walking sack out – about the Texas Rangers for the next five years because you won one World Series. How about he's on a one-year deal? How about we go get him next year? Bring him back. I think we're going to need him next year. And run it back. I think, well, we're running it back this year. Oh, why we can't we, wait a year? Why, why, are, why are you worried about next year? Because this, this, I don't this. think it's happening this year. Got too, got too many pitchers injured. We didn't think it was going to happen last year, Tim. I never thought it was going to happen ever in my lifetime, Colby. Well, see, I'm being superstitious. I didn't think it was going to happen last year, so I can't think it's going to happen this year or it won't happen. By the way, Tim, not to totally change all the subjects because I know you're about to get into the MLB power rankings, but I just want to throw this this note out here. Uh, The Mavericks are no longer in eighth place. They are currently uh, sitting in sixth place. Yeah, they're not even in the play-in game Mm -hmm. area now. By the way, they're only like a game or a game and a half behind fifth place Pelicans. With what, 11 games to play? Might be able to track. If you got playing defense, like we'll see because it's Friday. You get another shot at Sacramento in Sacramento. But, yeah. I mean, they're getting hot at the right time. Damn right. So maybe there's hope. Maybe my prediction of them missing the playoffs this year won't come true. And I'd be okay with that. I I don't mind being wrong. I mean, I I love it when you're wrong. I know you do because I usually have bad things about the Rangers, the the Mavericks. And the Cowboys. And And everybody. Everybody. You're a pessimistic fan. Except for the Stars. The Stars are going all the way this year. Oh, shit. Stars are going to win the cup. Uh, Colby, we're going to raise a cup here in the studio. I might get. I might have to get Darian Hatcher, Richard Matvichuk, Sean Chambers, Sergey Zubov, Mike Madano, Joe Newendike. They're all coming up to the studio for a party if we if if we win the Stanley Cup. All right then. We're gonna need a foosball table though, because that's all any of them ever want to do. Anybody play foosball? <laughs> it's the foosball, Bobby Boucher. So you got the MLB power rankings over there, real quick. I do, Colby, and I'm not gonna go through the whole list, but I want to touch on the Rangers and the AL West opponents. Because we have two AL West opponents that are like way down there, okay? Oh, dear. Is it is it the Astros because they lost to a minor league team? The, I feel like they did that on purpose. The Oakland as soon to be Las Vegas Athletics. Oh. Colby, your last team at 30th in the power rankings. At 26, the Los Angeles Anaheim Angels of Anaheim, Los Angeles Disney Angels. I think that's their full name. Sitting over there with Anthony Rendon hitting leadoff. Uh, you know, hey, Trout's back. Going to play a full Mike season. Mike Trout. Doubt it. And then to continue with the AL worst, we got to jump all the way to number eight for the Seattle Mariners. Dude, this is an up-and-coming team that I am a little scared of in the division. 
I, I can see that. they. All, I mean, last year they, they hit their stride, and then they fell off a little bit. Okay. Yeah, but the, you saw something there. There were sparks of things that, like, they were gluing this. It almost yep. felt like the first incarnation of that, like that Michael Young, Elvis Andrews, yep. that, that style of everybody kind of coming together, and you, you see that squad like, oh, we got something here. Yeah, like the 09 Rangers. Maybe. Right. Yeah. Um, number eight, your Mariners. Colby just in front at number seven. The Texas Rangers. Really? On the strength of Wyatt Langford and Evan Carter. They have them at number seven. With starting pitching being a question, huge question mark, which it is. Right. Because you're not going to get Scherzer or DeGrom back, if ever. Until, well, you'll get Scherzer back late, late, late in the season. You might get best case scenario Degrom back for the playoffs, right? Right. Um, but probably not at all this year for Degrom. So yeah, I, I can see the question marks. I don't know number seven's accurate because they have ahead of the Rangers at number six the Blow Jays. I'll get the fuck out of here. Which I don't get that. And then at number because five, they have everybody's kid playing on their team. And then at number five, ahead of the Blow Jays and the Rangers. The last AL worst team we have, the Houston Disastros. You know, that's good. That's good. Fine. Throw the I don't have a problem with it being in front of the Rangers. Throw, throw, the, throw the disrespect out. Yeah, Go the, ahead. The Rangers will love that. They, they thrived on that last year. Number four, your Philadelphia Phillies. What, just two years removed from being the worst team in the league? Which doesn't mean anything because the Rangers, when they won the World Series last year, were two years uh, removed from losing 100 games. Right. So that literally means nothing anymore, what you did last year. Number three, the Baltimore Orioles. Yeah. Who the Rangers dominated in the uh, division series last year. The Los Angeles Dodgers with Shohei, don't bet on me, Otani. And Colby, this is probably accurate. This would probably be my number one team too, as much as I hate them. The Atlanta Braves. Okay, yeah. I mean, they're supposed to be real good again. Yeah, I just don't have a problem with any of this. Like, I think that's low for the Rangers, but you know what? I'll take it because they're going to thrive on that. They're going to love it. Yeah, and the, the, the only problem that I have about it is that I think going into a season, you're, before the season starts, you're if you don't have the per, the team that won the championship last year, up near the top or at the top, then that's already issuing disrespect because they showed you last year they could win it. Now, whatever you're going to say about what's taken away from them, but you start the damn thing off with the champs in the front. Right. And then you should after the first week or your next time you change it up, then you, you tell everybody why you put them down so low. Yeah, and this, of course, is before the season starts. Again, the Rangers pitch off the season tomorrow. Oh, still don't think... <laughs> First, the Rangers will first pitch off the season tomorrow. I don't like that at all. Against the Cubbies uh, here at home in Arlington at the new, new Arlington Stadium. I still think they should have called it that. Mm -mm. The new ballpark in Arlington. Um, But it's Globe Live. I get sponsorship. It's Globe Live Field, right? The other, because the other one was Globe Life Park. Park, yes. And now it's Choctaw Stadium. By the way, Colby, our Arlington Renegades. Woot, woot. This weekend, game one against the Birmingham Stallions. What? These two teams hate each other. Uh, they've never played. <laughs> oh, yeah. Each other. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was just going for dramatic effect. So. So there's your Colby Seven Indy Car Tim Sports Report. So, coming up next, we've got a little good, bad, and the ugly. And then right after that, we're going into movie monsters and yes. rattling off a list because people do love lists. That's all coming up on the Colby Sapp and IndyCar Tim Show. Hello, sports fans. Fan stream sports. Introducing Star Power Smart Home Solutions, where cutting-edge technology meets effortless living. Control your entire home with just a tap on your smartphone. Adjust the lights, set the perfect temperature, and ensure your home is secure, all from the palm of your hand. Star Power has the experts that will transform your house into a secure, smart home. Experience the ultimate solution in comfort and security for your family. Get started at GetStarPower.com. Star Power, 
where innovation meets home. Hi, golfers. Indy Car Tim here. I want to talk to you a little bit about Golf Central Magazine. It's not just a golf magazine. It's the magazine for everything. Turf, travel, philanthropy, and lifestyle. Head over to GolfCentralMag.com and check out the latest issue. Some of the regular features in Golf Central Magazine. The Golf Bachelorette of the Month. The Golf Bachelor of the Month. The Golf Cart Girl of the Month. Golf History. Grip it and sip it. So head over to GolfCentralMag.com. It's free. It's the magazine for everything. Turf, travel, philanthropy, and lifestyle. Golf Central Magazine at GolfCentralMag.com. We'll see you there. Hello, folks. Let's talk a little bit about turf life. What is turf life? It's pretty much if your life involves turf in any way shape or form you live the turf life go ahead and brand yourself with the turf life maybe a back window decal maybe a hat you know where you can get those kinds of things to showcase that your life revolves around sports and and or anything that involves sports if it's a sports business or sports education or just your enjoyment of the outdoors head over to turflifeclub.com Become a turf head. Join the club today. You can do that by going to that said website that I just told you to go to. You can snag your window decal like I was talking about or any of your other turf life accessories. Show everybody that you live the turf life and we'll see you there over there at that turflifeclub.com. Orion Golf Management Solutions. Orion Management Solutions has tailored its service packages just like it tailors its approach to customers. Some owners need more supervision, while others need periodic assessment of their short-term and long-term strategies and programs. Orion can be called in to develop a business plan with the existing staff, or we can assist with the daily management of a facility or event. Either way, we make sure the client is satisfied and understands the direction the facility needs to go in order to achieve the owner's goals. Orion Management Solutions can help with owner assistance service solutions, daily course management, business plan development, monthly operations, or as-needed consulting services. Whatever your need, Orion Golf Management Solutions can help. Check out OrionGolf.com. Hey, listeners, make sure you check out the brand new Fan Stream Sports in-studio text line. You can reach us during any of our live shows or 24-7 at 214-937-0569. That's 214-937-0569. Text us 24-7 day or night, and we'll reply to you and make you part of the show. Coming back at you now. More fan stream sports. Welcome back to the Colby Sapp and IndyCar Tim Show right here on Fan Stream Sports on a Wednesday. Hoppy hump day. You say hoppy? Hoppy hump day. I'm trying to speak with a weird accent. I don't know. Good day, mate. I don't know what's happening. It is Wednesday. It is Fan Stream Sports. It is the Colby Sapp and IndyCar Tim Show right here live from the DSP Media Podcast Studios in sunny North Dallas, right off the tollway. Come say hello, but don't, unless you bring beer and whiskey for Whiskey Sap over here. Uh, there you go. I mean, if you're bringing beer, then... It's Happy Whiskey Day! Hey, we could do that. We could do that. Should have brought some Johnny Walker Blue. Sweet Jesus. I think Jerry will bring some Johnny Walker Blue to us. Squirrel. Or you just want... Uh, wait, don't tell me. Uh, I mean, I, I don't. I know Jameson, but you also like um, Jim. I do like. I know it wasn't Jack. I think of the other Jim. No, I, I. You give me a bottle of Jim Beam Black and leave me alone. All right. Uh, so Monday at the table in front of you, you'll probably see a bottle of, or at least a shot. <laughs> I don't know what your bottle costs. I'll have to see before I open my checkbook. You know, people still have checkbooks. <laughs> I might have just aged myself. <laughs> just, just the little one eighty-seven. Just get that. All right. All right, we're good. And you think you finish it before you leave? I don't know. It would be one shot and done. Or that's not the goal, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm just making sure we're, we're on the same page here. So I mean, I can get you an Uber. <laughs> I don't want to drive up here and Uber home. And then you got to Uber back to get your car. Dumb. <laughs> Should it, okay, I'll just Uber you here. And the civil can come get you. No. None of that's happening. No. No. Blaze? I'm, no. Come get you. Cole can come pick you up and take Say, you home. Beep, beep. I'll get one of my kids to take you home. <laughs> Have to do that for me all the time. It's great to have kids that can drive and don't drink. Right. It's amazing. Um, Colby, it is time for people love lists. Mm-hmm. But it's the Facebook birthdays. We're going to get the good, bad, and ugly, or are you going to do your list first? Oh, crap. I forgot. Uh huh. Damn it. All right. I'm going to do this. 
look, I've had bad cereal. I don't think that's the reason for your dilapidated brain function right now. <laughs> that man, that messed that messed me up. Although I might poop pretty easy tonight later. No. I hope it's later, not like right now. <laughs> it could be right now. But okay, so we've been doing the same run sheet, right, in the same order. Yes. For like three years. Yes. And I every week I screw it up somehow. I always forget a segment. It's right now. It is time for you to Jesus. play that music. And I tell everybody it's time for the good, bad, and ugly. Where I go shot. through all the people that are born today. And then I put a, make a list of the people that are famous enough to make my list. You check it twice. And I offer them up to you guys for us to decide. Well, you, along with me and Tim, separately, who is the good person, who is the bad person, and who is the ugly person. Thus the music. Thus the title of the segment. Thus, here we go. Starting thus. off today, thusly, um, <laughs> we're going to we're actually going to grab somebody from tomorrow, and the reason why we're doing that is she's going to be upcoming in the next Joker movie. Oh, it's uh, Lady Gaga. Wait, is, when you say the next Joker movie, is this the wa- sequel to the the Joaquin Phoenix Joker? Yep. Okay, that you haven't seen. That I haven't seen, correct. <clears throat> you said you were going to give it a shot. And you know, I said that. Well, now you have to. You still have it. Look, I had to try that peanut stuff. <clears throat> so. All right. But yeah. So, Who is she? Huh? Who is she? She's going to be Harley Quinn. Huh. In the, whatever it's called, Floyd or something. Anyways, the Joker 2 from that universe. Oh. Huh. Which is not part of the DC studios that James Gunn's <clears throat> right, and it's also not part of the Pat Bat universe. It's its own thing. Okay, why why do we have to get Lady Gaga involved in in this? Because apparently it's a musical. Tim, shut up. Um, no, no, uh, uh-uh. uh. There's no effing way. Joker Two is a musical. It's a musical, Tim. (sighs) Starring Harley Quinn as, or Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn, too. Apparently there's a trailer out for this already. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, there's stuff. There's, oh, I've I've seen screenshots and. I've seen on set stuff of the insiders and people DMing me going, hey. There you go, because you're interested in this stuff. Half of them don't even know I actually do a mystery shotgun podcast, but they still send me shit. Spread the word. So, what in the hell? Okay, that's got to be the next mystery shotgun, at least partially. Then, the Joker Two is a friggin' musical. If you were listening to the mystery shotgun last year, sometime you would have heard that Joker Two is a musical. Okay, well I've drank since last year, sir. Yeah, but you were there, and I was talking about it. Look, we had this conversation every yes. week that even the Colby Sabin IndyCar Tim show, the next day, I don't remember what we talked about, and I have to listen to it, and it's like I'm hearing it for the first time. <laughs> so I cannot remember every mystery shotgun that that you do, much less that I'm on. <sighs> I love you, Colby. I mean, I, I do show prep for that segment, sir. I don't You've do- never done show prep a day in your life. Sure do. I get here, what, an hour before the show? And right now, birthdays. Mm-hmm. For like 30 minutes. Of it. Uh, Randall Cunningham turned 61 years old today. Huh. It's underrated. Highly underrated quarterback. Why? Why is he underrated? Because he's never mentioned the <clears throat> same breath as, you know, people that, it, that impressed people at the quarterback position. It takes him a while to get to Randall Cunningham, and he was very effing impressive. Okay, I agree. He was great. He was great with Filthy Delphia. Right. He was really he was pretty good in Minnesota even. He might have had better years in Minnesota. He had a better team in Minnesota. Right. Um so yeah, no, I, you know, by the way, former Cowboy. Former Cowboy great. As weird as that is. Anne Ramsey passed away in 1988. Um she was Mama Fratelli in the Goonies. Oh, the old lady? Yeah, she was also Throw Mama from the train. Yeah, that's uh, that's where I know her from. I like the the Goonies when it came out the first time when it was called Gremlins. 
<laughs> it's our time down here. Down here, it's our time. What E that means? Redundancy. Turning 55 years old today, she's... Well, she was the reason why most people said, oh, I'll watch this NCIS. Polly Perrette, the little goth, like, CSI scientist person. She was kind of strangely hot, right? Yes. Which one was she on? Was she on the original one? Original the NCIS? NCIS? With yes. Former UCLA quarterback Mark Harmon? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not most people know that, but... <laughs> no. They also don't know that Joel McHale was a UCLA tight end. Who? Great Joel McHale. Not McHale's Navy. Oh. <laughs> Joel McHale. He doesn't have a tattoo above his penis that says, Welcome aboard. Welcome to Jamaica. Have a nice day. But I don't know why he's even made my list. Buster Posey turns 37 years old today. He's a pretty good catcher. He's pretty good. He's also one of them giants, though. So. Yeah. Helped beat the Rangers. He might be in, he might be nominated as my bad. Yep. Um, Quentin Tarantino turned sixty one years old today. There's one of them. I mean, he's all right. By the way, Colby, I watched a Quentin Tarantino movie for the first time a couple of weeks ago. Wait, like which one, or just any Tarantino movie? And, no, 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 no. I mean, I've seen Quentin Tarantino movies. Okay. This particular one I watched for the first time. And I'm a Quentin Tarantino fan. I, for the most part, have liked everything that I've seen from Quentin Tarantino. Right. Maybe not as much as other people. Maybe not rank them as high as other people do. This movie was just bad. Would you like to know which movie? I'm trying to remember the name of it now. Uh... Yeah, I would like to know. how forgetful it was that I'd never seen it before. Um, You're going to start making me ask you who's in it. No, because I probably couldn't tell you who was in it. Crap. Hang on. Well, you're, I can't you're gonna, draw the name for no information. You're going to, like, I'm going to be mad at myself when I, because it's a real famous one. Oh, dear. Uh, like, real famous. You never saw Pulp Fiction before. No, I saw Pulp Fiction. Okay. Saw Kill Bill. And Glorious Bastards, one of my favorites. Django and Change is one of my favorite. Hateful Eight is one of my favorites. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is one of my favorites. Um, crap, it's like one of his most famous movies. I can't freaking remember the name of it. Um, Reservoir Dogs. You you never. No, and it was bad. That was just a freaking bad movie, dude. There was nothing redeeming about that movie whatsoever. Well, no, no, no. Why do I gotta be Mr. Pink? That was a funny moment. Like, I get it. That was a funny moment in the movie. But the movie overall, dude, I was... So I watched it with two drunk chicks. Two really drunk chicks. That apparently that's their thing. They get together and get drunk and watch it. So it was like their 50th time to watch it. Uh-huh. And my first. And by the way, they were both passed out the first 20 minutes of the movie. But I did the gentlemanly thing and just watched the movie. <laughs> and pushed in their stool. Pushed in their stool for them later. No, but I was highly, because I wanted to see it, because I'd never seen it. Dude, I was highly disappointed. It's not, not that great. Okay. Um, you were obviously tired, grumpy, or just sad that you weren't getting anything from the two women that fell asleep beside well, you. I did the next morning. But, no, I just. No. I wasn't even drunk yet. I was, I, dude, not, I was just, I was disappointed. Unacceptable. I was disappointed. Unacceptable. That no. Reservoir Dogs. You 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 left it with a meh, like of the most epic meh ever. By the way, I've also never seen uh, Boondock Saints. Should I watch Boondock Saints? Yes. <laughs> I've never seen it. You know what? No, never mind. I don't know. I don't know right now because you like went meh on Reservoir. I don't know if you should watch Boondock. But Saints. I like all of his other stuff, dude. From Dust Till Dawn, like I like all of his stuff. I, you know I just what? was not impressed with. Am I not allowed to be unimpressed with one of his movies out of like ten? You know what? Yes, yes, you are allowed. Reservoir Dogs is not one of them. <laughs> it was just wasn't great. It was slow to start. Character development was a little. Weird? I don't know, man. I just didn't get it. 
Turning 53 years old today, the great Nathan Fillion. Okay, why is he the great Nathan Fillion? Because he's the great Nathan Fillion, sir. I mean, I, I like Nathan Fillion, but I probably like him for ways way separate from the way why you like him. What? Oh, wait, you're a Castle fan, right? Is that it? Never saw it. I didn't even know he was in it. Okay. Then, was he was in Castle? He was Castle. He uh, was, I never knew that. I knew that show existed. I never knew who. I never watched He's it. Castle. Okay. I never knew. I didn't know that. I mean, yeah, and most of the people from um, from being brown coats also showed up there. All right, Firefly, Serenity. Never saw Firefly. Although I've been told I should watch Firefly, even though I know how it ends, because it just ends, right? Well, it kind of. The, and according to your rules, I know how everything ends. Why do I have to watch it? Oh no my my rule my my rule isn't that my uh, besides Titanic I ended up watching that anyway. Everybody Good, did. you should have. It was Is amazing. It dumb. Better than Reservoir Dogs. Oh, shut your mouth. You know what else was better than Reservoir Dogs? Ishtar. <laughs> I'm not going to take this amount of disrespect, sir. Look, they, it's a swing and a miss. I'm just I'm just saying. Fergie is 49 years old today. And still not attractive. She's She was the first definition for me of the Sumta babe. Okay. Sometimes she'd walk out on stage and I'd be like, damn! And other times she'd walk out on stage and be like, damn. Did you know the Black Eyed Peas existed before Fergie joined the band? Yes. I hesitate to use the word band. It's more of a singing group. Well, I mean group, band, whatever. We know what you mean. Because I, like, heard somebody played a song for me from, and they're like, oh, it's Black Eyed I'm like, Shh, just stop. Just, no, it's it's terrible. And I was like, oh, wait, this isn't bad. They're like, yeah, this is way before Fergie joined the band. I was like, oh, so she ruined it. Because it wasn't bad. Uh, Brenda's song is 36 years old. There's the other one. So oh, you we, had three? I had three. How old is she? She's 36. Pretty hot, Colby. And finally, she kills everybody every Christmas. Ah, there it is. She's 55 years old and still hot. Mariah Carey. I mean, come on. Is she? Yes. Is she? Uh, yes. Not as hot as Brenda's song. And she's Asian. What is... You know what? That has nothing to do with it, Tim. Nothing. She's still hot, even though she's Asian. That's all I'm saying. Oh. Huh. All right. Well, you missed Kendra Scott. Oh, Great Scott. Kendra, that's her middle name. Kendra Great Scott. Uh, but no, those are my big three. Mariah Carey, Brenda Song, and Quentin... Shouldn't have made Reservoir Dogs Tarantino. You shut your mouth. All right, Colby. God, I have so many bads here. It's not even close. I don't know who to pick. Uh, my good, though, Colby, out of this list. You know what? To appease you, I'm going Quentin Tarantino is my good. All right. Hopefully that'll make up for a little bit of it. I mean, I don't know about that, but because it's still a bad opinion on, on Well, it was a bad movie, so I don't know what to tell you. Most of his are good, but not all of them. They can't all be tens. You know what? If you said you didn't really like The Hateful Eight, I'd have been like, oh, I liked that one. I'd have, I'd have been like, okay. I actually liked that one. Uh, my bad, Colby. Again, more opera. I've. Uh, two huge opportunities here. Both musical related. Hmm. You know what, though? Got to go with Fergie. Because Lady Gaga can be normal and sing normal, and she sounds pretty good when she tries to not be weird. So I will respect her musical ability, but not really what she puts out in the mainstream. Because okay. I know she can sing, because I've heard it. She just chooses not to. 
Well, she chooses to do what makes her the most. Yeah, effective. and I get that's fine. Whatever. I, I don't like what she does, but I, I know that she can do good stuff. I like money. And I cannot lie. Wait, what? Oh, that wasn't where you were going with that. Mm-mm. Colby, my ugly, out of all of these, good or not, Lady Gaga. She's not an attractive human being, sir. I don't care how talented she is. She is not attractive. Yeah, I'm not going to... You know what? I'm not going to hammer you about that, but I... The I, hammer. I, I will kindly disagree just because there's uglier people on this. On place. the list? Like who? I mean, the dudes... Like, Quentin Tarantino is not... A, no, he's well, not... I know, but I already used him as my good. And I'd rather sleep with Quentin Tarantino than Lady Gaga. Mark. <laughs> Oops. Uh, my good what? is, come on, Brown Coats Unite. The, I don't know what that means. The great. Well, you would if you watched Firefly Sen- Serenity, sir. Brown Coats. Does that mean they're pooping? Yes. That's the that's the battle cry of the sci-fi saga. <laughs> of the Rebel Squadron. Yeah. Brown Coats Unite. It's all about the poop. <sighs> Just saying. The great Nathan Fillion, who, by the way, will be Guy Gardner, the Green Lantern, in the upcoming Superman Legacy movie. Colby, do you know where I like Nathan Fillion from? Where? He played television weatherman Rain or Shine. On Modern Family for a handful of episodes. <laughs> well, so that's why I like Nathan Fillion from his Modern Family part-time work. I'll tell you, if I can ever somehow, and it's not possible now, but the greatest movie for me would have been if you could somehow get Bruce Campbell, Nathan Fillion, and Bruce Willis in the same movie. I don't know what I don't I wouldn't know what to do with my hands. Why? What what would that accomplish? Did, Are they just badasses together? That's like if it's a Bruce Willis movie, I'm watching it. If it's a <coughs> Bruce Campbell movie, I'm watching it. Right. If it's a Nathan Fillion anything, I'm You're watching, watching it. it. All right. So there you go. If you say so. Uh, so that's my good. My bad is I have to, I mean, it's Buster Posey. Yeah, I see. I was going to do that, too. I hate that guy. Me, too. F and Giant. Sure catch, though. And my ugly is Quentin Tarantino. Because he wasn't designed to be a good-looking human being. Oh. You know what? It doesn't he matter. He make movies, though. He make great movies. Except for one. <laughs> you know. I don't know why he had to make that one bad one. And that was very early on, right? That's the one that set off everything and made everybody go, this guy's really good. If that was the first Quentin Tarantino movie I ever saw, I probably would have never watched another one. You know what? If you'd watched it back then when all the other movies were hyper trash. Okay, maybe. maybe. Then you would have been like, wow, this has a different... Seeing Tarantino movies after that and not respecting the fact that this is his first like big foray into making his style of movie where it's... It's kind of junked up, and some of the lines got to be connected, and it's got a little bit of a mystery to it, and you're right. like, holy crap, what's going on? And the amount of just vulgarity spitting back and forth and people talking like they do in yeah. every Tarantino movie, being real raw, that was that was something that was never pushed before, and it made it. So that, anyway, shut up. I hate you. I'm getting lit up on my... Uh... I imagine you are. I imagine you are. So there you go, guys. There is your good, bad, and the ugly. If you had choices that were different than ours, then I don't know. Write them on a piece of paper and stick them in your ear. We give out the text line yet. 214-937-0569, by the way, is the studio text line. If you're not watching on video and you're listening on the app or somewhere else, you can still text us, and we'll see it. Yeah, just fine. Hey, or comment down below either on YouTube and or on the Facebook. And I guess if you tweet at us, our phones will do something at some point. Our uh, our Twitter's right there on the 
on the bottom of the screen. So right now, it's time for me to hop on a two-wheeled handlebar called a Segway as I throw it over to Tim because he's got a list. Call me. This is an honor of you. Hmm. As, as I usually try to steal some list from somewhere that you will enjoy. And you hate sports. I don't hate sports. You hate talking about sports. I don't even hate talking about sports. Sometimes you hate talking about sports. Okay, when we over-talk about sports, I I kind of get just tired of saying the same things over and over again. And I, and I get that. So I try to stay away from sports lists unless there's some significant thing happening like, I don't know, World Series or Super Bowl or something like that that dictates that there's interest in a certain list that might have something to do with that, right? Right. For the most part, I try to stay away from those things. Just for your benefit. So what we have, Colby. What we have here is a failure to, to communicate. communicate. Is I have the top 10 most powerful movie monsters of all time. Ooh. According to one ranker.com. Uh, we all know I usually end up having a problem with ranker, but. Well, because ranker is, for those of you that don't know, is literally voted on by users. So there will be a list, and you upvote or downvote whatever's on the list. So this is based on internet users, which they're always wrong. We know that. Uh-huh. You guys all suck. You're stupid. You don't know anything. So qu- stop voting on things. Internets. <sighs> yeah. Internets. So there's some on here, and I only went ten. I, this thing goes pretty high but uh, you know the higher we went like i don't know any of these monsters or where they came from so we're just doing 10 and number 10 that i give you is going to steer you wrong for the rest of the list oh dear number 10 is an anomaly that's on the list but it's there and i can't ignore it um and then there's uh what Five out of the next nine that I've never heard of before. Maybe four. Colby at number 10. Going to have to get to our pictures. Because I have visuals for this, Colby. Okay. Let me get the banner off the screen. Do you recognize this character? Is that Stitch? Number 10 is Stitch. Okay. The number 10 most powerful movie monster. I mean, he was a little badass, but all right. Um, And it's supposedly because, uh, as the narrative here goes, this little blue critter is functionally invulnerable and nothing to sneeze at when it comes to the power department. Okay. He's basically unstoppable with whatever he wants to do. He's indestructible. He can see in the dark. He can move objects at least 3,000 times his size and think faster than a supercomputer. These are all true. So I saw the first Lilo and Stitch or Lilo and Stitch, whatever. I saw that when it came out, right? It's just a kid's cartoon. And I know it spawned a cartoon series or whatever because I remember seeing it on a lot of times. I never watched it. But, like... Stitch? I don't know where the rest of the list was. So, I don't, I mean, yes, everything they said was true. This little, this little dude's kind of a badass. See, I was curious what your reaction was going to be to Stitch. And it sounds re- like you're accepting. Well, I am, even though when you, when he said, when it's like he can lift things 3,000 times his size, well, all right. How many? We've got a lot of monsters that probably are <clears throat> three thousand times his size. Right. So, all right, Colby, at number number nine, I offer you. Oh, the Omega, the Omega from. Tell me what that's from. The 2014 film Edge of Tomorrow. Yes, adapted from the Japanese novel. All you need is kill. Right. Uh, so I so guess this is, this is the live, die, repeat. This is the yep. Tom Cruise vehicle. Yep. Yes. Okay. I, I've only seen this movie once. It wasn't a repeater movie for me, even uh-huh. though it was really good. And I, of course I wasn't into the, where it was created from. Right. So 
So the Omega is the monster, if you've seen that movie, that has the ability to loop time. And that's why that kept happening to Tom Cruise's character. Yes, it is, ba- it is, basically, it is basically what happened at the end of Dark- Doctor Strange. It can just yeah. do that. Yeah. So. So the Omega is our number nine, Colby, on the list. Any issues with, with the Omega? No, I don't. I don't. Because so that's, I think that's a more of a badass thing than Stitch. How about number eight? Number eight. Uh, From Guillermo del Toro's 2013 giant monster opus, Pacific Rim, I offer you Otachi. Yeah, okay. So this is the big boy kaiju at at the end of the thing. And it was was, was a damn badass. I I mean, there's got to be a... Because this is not the most badass kaiju to ever be. So there's there's a lot more that could go on. Okay. But so this says like all other kaiju, Otachi appears to be a genetically engineered weapon of mass destruction created by extra dimensional aliens bent on conquering Earth. And Pacific Rim Otachi is one of the last kaiju to come through the breach. Yep. And to uh and the largest to ever make landfall, skirmishing with giant robots, the Jaegers, off the coast of Hong Kong and then the neon lit streets of the city itself. The fact that Jaegers, as their current form in Pacific Rim, could actually like damage it a little bit, yeah. tells you, okay, it's not he's not the most badass. All right, how about and this one I know, number seven, Colby, number seven, the Xenomorph Queen herself. Yeah, she needs from to go. Alien. She needs to go down below the kaiju for me she can of course create more xenomorphs and they can do a lot of damage and they've got acid blood and yeah they're scary for humans right right but uh, otachi runs through a xenomorph camp he's probably doing okay he's he's probably all right so i'd probably flip-flop them stitch is probably he's probably doomed at that point (laughs) Uh, at this point on the list yeah at this point um yeah and again this is one on the list that i've heard of and of course the next one at number six is one that we've all heard of colby king kong is okay i can think of a few that are ahead of king kong but not as many as what we have left so i'm i'm a feeling like there's going to be there's going to be some there are going to be some uh, some pissed off moments for me. So in the narrative here, though, it offers different versions of King Kong because it says in the 1933 original and Peter Jackson's 2005 remake, King Kong is is impressive, but only compared to humans because he's only about 25 feet tall. Okay. But then in other other films they increase his size considerably yes and he goes toe to toe like with Godzilla right right um like in 1962's King Kong versus Godzilla when he's you know 100 feet tall or whatever and of course now the current monster verse narrative that they're round about the same size i mean go watch a movie right. trailer they're running at the camera and they actually gave him like a robotic arm or whatever right um king kong is not as strong as all you know, all the other monsters, but he's not scared of any of the other monsters. And he's also smarter than like any of the other monsters. So yeah, give me, give me King Kong to be up a little higher on this list. Uh, Colby at number five. Wow. The thing. Okay. Yeah. It's a shape shifting alien life form that crash landed in at Antarctica. Uh, from John Carpenter's 1982 film. And by the way, at the time that I saw this movie in, I don't know, 1982, Uh this was the second scariest movie I had ever seen in my life. I mean, this, the Thing remake, which, by the way, wasn't bad. No, Uh, but it wasn't this. No, it wasn't this. As far as monsters go, though, I mean, for humans, yeah, super scary. But anybody got some fire? You know what I mean? You can just pretty much end. Or you think you did. Yeah. Uh, in the bad guy, and it takes on a human form. So, um, no, this should go. This is definitely below the alien okay. queen, and probably below Stitch. 
It says, when threatened, the thing is capable of using its shape-shifting powers to create some pretty gnarly weaponry. But the real power of the alien comes from its ability to hide in plain sight, creating perfect duplicates of any living thing with which it comes into contact. According to a computer simulation run by one of the characters, this would mean the thing could potentially assimilate all life on Earth within 27,000 hours of first contact. That's a little over three years. Right. You let the xenomorphs run through the planet Earth, and I think we're all gone in like a a couple of months. (laughs) Less than three years. Yeah. Uh, Colby, at number four, and this is one that I am most familiar with from my childhood, and I know they remade this movie, but it does not even compare to the original. Speaking of the Kraken from the original Clash of the Titans. Also saw on Earth versus the Flying Saucers, the Seventh Voyage of Sinbad. But this is from the picture we see is from Clash of the Titans. And it's not it's not even how the Kraken should look. But this that's was, the original Kraken. That, yeah, I know that's the original Kraken, but that's not the Kraken is a gigantic octopus. I've seen that variation, but I like this one better. And the Kraken, by the way, um would get its ass stomped by the kaiju, probably the xenomorphs would kill it. Probably King Kong, maybe. Yeah, yeah, King King the Kong. The bigger is, King Kong. Yeah, well, even the smaller King Kong. I mean, he's barely the size of that mountain. Look at the people; they're right there, giving you the size difference. Well, that and what we see from the Kraken's only half of his body, though. That other half is underwater. Yeah, and he just—I mean, no, that. But as the girls say, size isn't everything. Yeah, no, that that be <laughs> done. Uh, Voltron's taking out that row beast. Voltron. Uh-huh. What about the fiery phoenix from Battle of the Planets? Think they could take him out? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, they got it too. G-Force come in and get that taken care of. The wave motion gun from, from Battle of or from uh, Star Blazers? <laughs> As it takes them three years to light that MF up. <laughs> Everybody's sweating looking at the camera. Dude, that's my all-time favorite cartoon, I think. Battle, or uh, Star Blazers. That God, I your, loved Star Blazers. That is your introduction into anime, sir. That's, that's the only anime I've probably ever watched uh, with Captain Argo. God, that was great. Colby, number three is one I haven't ever seen before. So you'll have to make me familiar with King Ghidorah? That is Ghidorah. That is, yeah. And no, it's... It's a kaiju, right? That's... This is the one that really and truly Godzilla should have. I mean, it takes more than just Godzilla to take out, right? Okay. Like, it took, like, a lot of times it ends up taking, like, Godzilla plus Mothra plus also, like, the help of another monster to take this dude. Like, Godzilla's not scared of this guy, but this this guy's, yeah. Yeah, no. I mean, it looks like a big dragon. It's It's a Hydra. You know, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Type of situation where you you cut off the head and it doesn't matter or just right. throw back that yeah. whole situation. And no, it's a badass. Probably thought it was going to be number one as far as most dangerous really? monster. Yeah. Okay, well, there's one obvious one that we haven't talked about yet. So it's either one or two, Colby, probably that you're thinking of. Okay. And I will tell you it's not number one because Oh God Zora. Can I say it like that? I mean, you did. It's number two on our list. Huh. King of the Monsters. Which should be number one. I've never heard of number one. Maybe you have. Um, but, I mean, you can't argue King Kong. Or Godzilla's the king of the monsters, right? Until him and King Kong uh, join forces to fight somebody. Which is coming up. Yeah, it's what coming up again. What they're doing. They do that about every 20 years. Because old Scar is down there in the underworld kicking ass. No, Godzilla, I if I, it was between those two who was going to be number one that I thought. So okay. him being number two, number one is. So I will tell you, before I put it on screen, I want to read the description because I'm not sure how to pronounce it, although I have an idea. Okay. So I want to read you the description of this, the origins uh, to see if you can figure out who, who this is. Or, you know what? I'll just put the picture up. And if you know, if you can tell by the picture, that's fine. Yeah. 
hell is that? Uh, Colby, this is a creature called Chulu. Chul- Chulu. Cthulhu. There you go. Uh-huh. I know I couldn't pronounce it right. Cthulhu, because it's C-T-H-U-L-H-U. Yeah. So you do know who this is. This is in this monster is in nearly every um like brought up in nearly every like magic card game, everything right. like that. It, normally something has has to do with this particular creature. It says the first appeared in Weird Tales magazine in 1928. Right. Um, Which I didn't know, but yeah. Um it it appeared in the 2020 film Underwater. Um, they never use like the creature's name in that movie, but it's clear like who it is. So yeah, I've never heard of this before. It's, but is it badass? I mean, it's badass, but I wouldn't put it on this list at all. Really? No, I wouldn't. No, because I mean, yes, is he badass? But if you actually decided you were going to make a movie where it was this versus like Godzilla, then you're then Godzilla is just kind of walking over it. As that's it, that's done. Right now, is it is it a cool name and have bands been named after this? And that's pretty every, cool, Cachulu. That's, oh wait, that was right. You don't buy it at Starbucks, Tim. You don't go. Hey, I need one of them ice cold Cachulus. Can I get a Cachulu with non fat milk, please? Dear sweet Jesus. Well, what's it called? Cachulu. That's what I just said. You said Cachulu. Cachulu. What are you saying? Not what you're saying. <laughs> oh, you are you you're using a hard T. Yes. As in Tim. Yes. Cthulhu. I like you know, he- hearing you say it makes it sound wrong. Now I'm not even sure if I'm saying it right. Because it doesn't give me a pronunciation guide. The, so anyway. The call of Cthulhu. Yeah, it even says that here. The call of Cthulhu. <laughs> Next time I go to try and find that word in my file cabinet, it's going to come out Cachulu. I hope so. And I'm going to be so mad. That would be so great, Colby. So mad. So coming up next on the Colby Sapp and IndyCar Tim show, <laughs> as I try and get Cachulu out of my head. Um, How dare you. We got a little solar eclipse talk. And by the way, we'll find out if those solar glasses are actually worth a damn or are they not even actually worth anything at all. Plus... Neuralink brain transplant, that guy actually did something, got one done, and what did he do on his first day? And news and notes is all coming up on the Colby Sapp and IndyCar Tim Show. Hello, sports fans. Fan stream sports. All right, guys, time to talk a little bit about turf life. You've seen the hats on our heads. You've been or seen the video of the studio. You've seen that the decals are all over the place turf life man it's the brand that salutes the consumer and industry players everywhere whose lives involve turf what does that mean that means if you play or have a business or you know maybe you're a sports educator you're going to be on turf at some point so you live the turf life so go ahead and tell everybody you live the turf life by having your turf life window decal or you know the hat or the keychain or the something Along that lines, just go to TurfLifeClub.com and become a turf head. That's what it's called when you live the turf life. You're now a turf head. And you can go join the club today, snag that window decal, or snag any other special turf life accessories, and go over there to that website, which is TurfLifeClub.com, and get your stuff and show everybody that, man, I'm all about that turf life. And then you just kind of raise your coffee mug at them and go, yeah, turf life, baby. That's what it's about. And then that's the end of the commercial. Ding. That means it's done in microwave talk. Orion Golf Management Solutions. Orion Management Solutions has tailored its service packages just like it tailors its approach to customers. Some owners need more supervision, while others need periodic assessment of their short-term and long-term strategies and programs. Orion can be called in to develop a business plan with the existing staff, or we can assist with the daily management of a facility or event. Either way, we make sure the client is satisfied and understands the direction the facility needs to go in order to achieve the owner's goals. Orion Management Solutions can help with owner assistance service solutions, daily course management, business plan development, monthly operations, or as-needed consulting services. Whatever your need, Orion Golf Management Solutions can help. Check out OrionGolf.com. Introducing Star Power Smart Home Solutions, 
where cutting-edge technology meets effortless living. Control your entire home with just a tap on your smartphone. Adjust the lights, set the temperature, ensure your home is totally secure, all from the palm of your hand. Experience the ultimate solution in comfort and security for your family. Start by going to the website, GetStarPower.com. That's GetStarPower.com. Hi, golfers. Indy Car Tim here. I want to talk to you a little bit about Golf Central Magazine. It's not just a golf magazine. It's the magazine for everything. Turf, travel, philanthropy, and lifestyle. Head over to GolfCentralMag.com and check out the latest issue. Some of the regular features in Golf Central Magazine. The Golf Bachelorette of the Month. The Golf Bachelor of the Month. The Golf Cart Girl of the Month. Golf History. Grip it and sip it. So head over to GolfCentralMag.com. It's free. It's the magazine for everything. Turf, travel, philanthropy, and lifestyle. Golf Central Magazine at GolfCentralMag.com. We'll see you there. Hey, listeners, make sure you check out the brand new Fans Dream Sports in-studio text line. You can reach us during any of our live shows or 24-7 at 214-937-0569. That's 214-937-0569. Text us 24-7 day or night, and we'll reply to you and make you part of the show. Coming back at you. Now, more Fans Dream Sports. Welcome back to the Ghidorah and Cthulhu show. Uh, what? I'm Cthulhu. That's Ghidorah. Coming up in the second hour, we've got the Kraken, the Thing, and King Kong coming up. Okay. Uh, I just like to say Cthulhu now. I wish you'd hush. Cthulhu. It is the Colby Sapp and IndyCar Tim show on a Wednesday night. Happy hump day! What up? I'm IndyCar Tim. That is Colby Sapp. We are just getting over Monster Talk. We are. Monster Talkers. Um... I saw a comedian one time. You ever heard of Wayne Brady? I have heard of Wayne Brady. <laughs> I saw him at the improv in Addison once with a very beautiful young lady. A long time ago. She wasn't into me. That's not the, that's not part of the story. Okay. Uh, Colby, the part of the story was that he brought up a guy out of the audience that fancied himself a comic that wouldn't stop heckling him. The heckler was funnier than Wayne Brady. And Wayne Brady's pretty funny. I mean, Wayne Brady is really funny. But this was a Hispanic gentleman, and his bit was, and this might have been planned. I don't, you know, you never know with this stuff. Probably a buddy of Wayne Brady's he was trying to give a shot to. But so this guy was was Mexican, and he went. He was starting his little bit with, you know, oh, you know, growing up we had traditional Mexican food and blah, blah, blah. And now I come to Texas, and, you know, they say it's Mexican food. and but it's And so he was making fun because – Jack in the Box had just introduced Monster Tacos. <laughs> and that's how he would say it. He goes, now I come here and I want to go order a taco and I have to go, yeah, I'd like a Monster Taco. <laughs> like, I don't know why he turned into Keanu Reeves. But it was really funny. Made me giggle a little bit. Is that how we're here? Giggling right now. It's, why, it's how we got here, All Cthulhu. Right. All right. Wait, Monster. you're Ghidorah. I'm Cthulhu. We ought to do a podcast called the Cthulhu and Ghidorah Show. I, you know what? I don't know why, but I was doing great. And all of a sudden now, I just want to come in there and kick your ass. I got the door locked. Mm. Oh, wait, it doesn't lock, does it? Damn it. Uh, Colby, let's talk a little bit solar eclipse. Wait, do you say eclipse or eclipse? Mitsubishi eclipse. <laughs> I knew you were going to go there. Um, so, look, eclipses are not new, right? They've been around for a while? No. Last I heard? Mm-hmm. So do you remember when you were little and we had an eclipse? God, now I'm saying it that way. An eclipse? I don't ever say eclipse. I don't know why I'm saying it that way. When we were little and you'd have like a partial uh, eclipse or, or whatever, and you would just, they told you to grab a, get a piece of paper and put a pinhole in it. Right. And you hold it up and that's what you look at the eclipse through, right? Through the little pinhole and it protected your eyes and now we got to buy glasses on Amazon? I mean, you do, but... Uh, there is a lot of people writing articles, by the way. They're like, these are just a scam thing. They're not like anything special. Well, that's my question. Like, do I have to buy these for me and the kids? Because we're going to watch it. We're going to look at it. Why are you going to watch it? What you Somebody will record it, and you can just watch it on YouTube later. Oh, you got to see it live. So I remember, I don't know, a number of years ago, we had a partial eclipse that came through here, right? And 
I drove the boys up because our view from our house, because we had trees, was obscured. So I drove them up to Walgreens. We sat in the parking lot. It was really early in the morning when you had to had to look at it. Okay. Um, so I drove them up to the Walgreens, and we all stood, and we watched the, the eclipse. It was really cool. You know, the kids were all, they were little, and so they were like, oh, my God, this is so cool. Monster tacos. <laughs> but you know, all my kids are Keanu Reeves. Um, but, I mean, it was kind of a special thing with the boys, right? So now they're all kind of like, and this is their first true full eclipse, right? Like, I don't. I know I've seen one, but I don't couldn't tell you when it was, or at least I thought it was at the time, probably in the early '80s or late '70s. All right, I'm not a, I'm not Neil deGrasse Tyson. Okay. Okay. I mean, I play one on TV. This this will be the like first one that ever got this big a notice for me. There's like this actual eclipse right. is happening. So because it's a big deal, and it's only happening like in a what 110 mile wide stretch. As it as it moves across America, and we're like smack dab in the middle of it. Yes. So this is it's it's a huge thing. I mean, if you're into that kind of thing, right? I get people just don't give a crap, but I mean, it's kind of a cool thing to be a part of, and you want to see it. I want to watch it with the kids. It's the day after my birthday, so if the world ends, at least I got to turn fifty three. Right. Right. Uh, it's also on my daughter's birthday, which is weird. So she's gonna turn twenty. I should probably know this, huh? 28. She'll turn 28. Kind of a 28 year old kid uh, that I know of. So, this is kind of a big deal. Well, Colby, look, I don't know if you're a TikToker. I send you stuff on TikTok all the time. I don't know if you ever see it because you never comment on it. I, you know what? I, I've noticed every time I've pulled up TikTok, it says, You've sent me a message, and I'm like, well, that's cool. And then I don't ever click on it. Oh, no, it's not a message. It's a TikTok. It's something I want you to watch. Oh, all right. That normally I was going to talk about on the show. Oh, well. So you probably have a backlog of videos I wanted you to watch. Probably should go watch those. That we could talk about on the show. But there's a lot of people with conspiracy theories about the the solar eclipse and what it means. And the one that happened in whatever, however, that crisscrosses the other way going through America. And then the part where the two intersect, there's a city in there like in Illinois called Nineveh when it's a message from God. And like, I'm just, it's really funny to read, some, to read and listen to some of these things. But there's another doomsday message, Colby, for the state of Texas that seems a lot more legit to me as the solar eclipse is expected to impact the Texas power grid. Are you shitting me? Negative. Like, this is a real story. This isn't a TikTok story. This is from Fox 4, Texas. I hate this. As Sean Rabb would say. So, the lack of solar power for the whatever four minutes or whatever it is is going to throw off the power grid? So, they're saying... That the and it is it's going to be pitch black at, at any given part right for four minutes through that little path that that's going to take away sixty percent of the electricity that's generated of the solar power gener uh, power that's generated in the state of Texas because where the 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 eclipse is going that's where like sixty percent of the solar power is 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 taken from. Yeah, well, you know, nobody could see this coming. <laughs> nobody could plan. It's it's like the cold. Nobody knows when the cold's going to happen and what during what months. And nobody can plan for that or the no. or the heat. Nobody can plan for that. We can't. Here, here's the dumb thing. Everybody talks about Texas is going to someday just move away from the rest of America and just be our own. We can't even handle being our own power station. You know, Texas is the only state with its own power grid, right? Yes, because we're going to secede. We are. Except for we're not. Because Text we it. Text it. Because we can't even, we can't even power a place right. Uh, Colby, the forecast provided by the Electric Reliability Council of Texas. That is the most. It's that, a made-up council, right? It has to be. <laughs> the Electric Reliability Council of Texas. Okay, the, first the, of all. Put the un in front of it. First of all. The Texas unreliable. When else, other than during an eclipse, would the Electric Reliability Council of Texas have anything to do with anything? When it snows or when it gets too hot in Texas? So they say that 
Solar generation, solar power generation will drop. Is that like after Generation X? We're the solar the generation. Solar generation. Captain Planet. Uh, well, the solar generation will drop from about a 99% of capacity in Texas to just under 8% capacity during those four minutes of peak totality. By the way, I call that band name, peak totality. <laughs> Gotta write these down. You do. Um, it says, but even in the hours leading up to and following totality, there will be a dip in solar generation of up to 60% because the sun will be partially covered okay. between noon and three. So in order to get everything right, we need to either go get Arnold Schwarzenegger or Colin Farrell to go ahead and have the total recall. Doesn't that only count on Mars? Are you just, you're worried about the totality so we can recall. Did you that. watch the Colin Farrell one? I did. Did you like it as much? I mean, I liked it, but as much. As much, yeah. Really? Yeah. I liked it, but I feel like I would have liked it more if I didn't know about the other one, the Arnold one. You know, and I think I liked it the way as much as I did because of not because of Colin Farrell, even though he's awesome, but because of the other two ladies that were in it. I mean, holy crap. Let's go. Um, God, a lot of people text me. Uh, but no, so I loved Arnold, right? Loved the Arnold one. Had uh, Sharon Stone as his fake wife, you know, at the beginning before he killed her. Right. She was still hot when she was still hot and not crazy yet. Uh, and I like Colin Farrell. I'm not, you know, no dislike for him. Excited to see the Penguin. Yep. The new Colin Farrell series that's coming out. The HBO Max, get ready. Hold on to your butts. Yep. Um, but I think I just go into those things when it's a remake, like knowing it's a remake. And like, normally I don't watch remakes. Like, I didn't watch the remake of, of Footloose. Like, I have no desire. By the way, this is the our, one. our current solar eclipse talk. Yeah, we're talking solar eclipse as we get into Footloose talk. Uh, so anyway, Colby, out of all of the doomsday, thanks for getting us back on the road, mm. pulling us out of the ditch. Um, for all of the doomsday crap you hear on, on the TikTok and whatever social media it is that you're out there listening to and watching, it's just an eclipse. It's not a message from God. It's an eclipse. It's a naturally occurring phenomenon. It's part of the uh, part of the existence of the universe. They've been around as long as the Earth has been around, and the Sun and the Moon, and, and they will continue to be around long after we're dead. And they don't mean anything other than that, that the Earth is circling the the Sun and the Moon is circling the Earth. And sometimes they intersect. Right. That's all it means. Okay. And, unless it means something different this time. <laughs> so just. Everybody chill. I mean, we almost ended the whole world because our calendars flipped over one year. Y2K, Colby. Yep. Planes were going to crash. That's right. So, yes, the Texas power grid that's apparently supposed to support an entire would-be country will now suffer because there's some shade in the middle of the day. I don't know what else to tell you. You need to tell me about this Neuralink, fools, what you need You're to tell me. You're more interested in that, aren't you? Hell yeah, I am. I didn't have single solar eclipse talk in news and notes, but I had, no? I had this joker in here. Uh, do you have it in front of you? I mean, I can pull it up. Because I saved it, and I don't have it in front of me for some reason now. Because we had the first human being yes. that had the Neuralink uh, brain transplant or whatever, right? Or the implant? Mm-hmm. Um, I have a Reuter story here, but that's not where I got that from. You probably have this. Oh, you have the fart just like I did, huh? Yes. So the Neuralink human patient, apparently, <laughs> this is new because I just pulled this up. It allows the person to control a mouse with their brain. So the Neuralink is, this of course is Elon Musk's big deal that he's been working on. And the whole thing was for... In order to have where you can connect to other electronics without having to use any type of, well, any type of Like mouse, physical contact. Physical yeah. contact, whatever. Be able to think and things happen. That was his dream for this. And so the Neuralink is where they put a chip actually in your head. And it, it now, it Bluetooths you to shit. That's what it does. 
right? What are we, what are we doing? Oh, yeah, no, this is the smartest doing? thing ever. I swear to God. And so the first human patient to receive a Neuralink brain implant used it to stay up all night playing Civilization, Civil, Civilization 6. Playing video games, Colby. Which, I have to admit, Civilization 6 wouldn't have been my choice, but you're telling me that I can control my character with, your brain. with my brain? Like so, you can sit up there and play GTA Five, just watching the watching the screen, and just telling it what to do, just thinking about what you want it to do, and it does it. And okay, look for for all the crap we talk about that meshes like science and biology, and and they've figured out the part of the brain that can tell that tell you that you're yourself. And they can disable that to where you don't know that you're you and you're looking at yourself doing things. Like, we talked about that before. Uh-huh. Okay, don't do that. Out of all of the things that we've discussed, to me, like this, I'm on board. Like, you're you're on board this. with the Neuralink. Continue Neuralink. And especially if Elon Musk is doing it because, I mean, he knows what he's doing. He's pretty smart. I mean, as long as you don't read all of his Twitter. And how soon before... Or X. Neuralink... Is tied into his Teslas to where you can just sit there in your car in the wherever you want, back seat, driver's seat, passenger seat, drive the car with your brain. Oh yeah. No, no, no. This is that's this an is, option you gotta pay eight hundred dollars extra. This is this is <laughs> this is where it's going. This is I mean, oh and you're God. not talking about just Neuralink to a mouse, Neuralink to driving a car, but being able to um fly jets. Yeah. Do stuff like that. Without- and even via remote, like you don't even have to be on the jet or in the car. Right. You could no. be sitting at a computer terminal somewhere via Bluetooth controlling that thing. Without having to feather the stick or anything along that lines or really know how. you just like, I need to go this way. I need to go this way. And it <sighs> takes that information and you're like, oh, crap, we got to go faster it will start going like the computer inside the machine that you're trying to work will work with what your brain wants it to do. Basically your brain now becomes the brain of that computer. I don't know. I'm rethinking this now. Maybe it's not a great idea. And you, okay. Let me explain to for <laughs> that everybody like that's, this. Oh no, no, it gets worse, Tim. I know it gets right, worse it's... because you know what? Google's been doing this whole time? Learning? Learning, yes. You know what the company Google's been doing this whole time? Reading your mind? Making robots. I quit. Artificial intelligence. I quit. Artificial intelligence linked in with robots. Now you also have the ability to... While that neural link is in your brain, hold on, sci-fi nerds. I've got one for you. What's it doing? If the neural link is now able to know what you're thinking while you're thinking it, what's it doing? Kids, anybody in the back? Yeah, it's mapping your brain. Hello? So what happens when something maps your brain? It now knows. It knows you. How you, how you do. Like better than you. Now, now. What happens when the artificial intelligence control the robots and then now they're like, you know what we need? Less humans. Le- less humans, Tim. Because that's what's going to happen. Less humans. And it's of- Skynet and Neuralink all yes! together. I've been telling you guys for years. We're just happily marching towards the time to where robots and all this S is happening. And we're just like, I don't know how it happened. We sit and watch it the whole time. The whole time. Colby, this could be bad. This could be bad. It could be very bad. This is all, I mean, every little step, every little step that we, we sit and just watch happen, we're going to connect ourselves to computers. That never goes wrong in the movies. Ever. Ever. And we're just <clears throat> following right along. Just following. We are life- imitating art the problem with this is all of our art when it at the end of the art is bad it's never good and we're just following along 
just being stupid. And you know what? It's probably it's probably going to be here before you know you and I are like in the dirt. Yeah, we'll probably see the rise of the robots on our way out. And by the way, we've had movies that predicted this thirty years, forty years ago. Yes, and we didn't listen. We're like, at the, remember at the time, like, oh my god, that is so far fetched. It is, and so beyond current technology. Like in our lifetime, that it, we'll never get close to that. Colby, you and I. I mean, we're close to the same age, right? We grew up kind of in the same era. Right. We grew up, we were born before even telephone answering machines. Yeah. Like, we're a thing. And VCRs were a thing. And by the time we were teenagers, we had call waiting, video recording, digital CDs, music on on, on compact discs. Yep. And now advance another 30 years. And dude, the technology is just ridiculous. It's terrifying. It is. You know what else? My coffee was nothing but coffee grounds. <laughs> How did you get coffee grounds in your cup? Mm-hmm. Is that worse or better than the cereal that I ate at the beginning of the show? About the same. I don't know. It looks like it's worse. About the- I took a mouthful of coffee grounds one time on a spoon just as a dare. About the same. <laughs> well, you know what? I think the coffee maker's coming alive, and it did it on purpose. Maybe so. Yeah, because of the yeah. So uh, that all that all aside, since we're all heading this way anyway, I wouldn't be. I'd be down with the Neuralink. Go ahead. With in you. I mean, go ahead. What do you want to control besides other people? Oh no! I mean, what else is the Neuralink going to end up doing? Right. Yeah. That's the thing. Because. You have the Neuralink on, and now, now all of a sudden, it can send information to your brain, and now it can just you can just sit back and you're like actually like this is where the holodeck thing could yeah. happen because now you're seeing stuff that is projecting to your brain. You can Google stuff just in your brain without without. Could you would be a master of trivia? Well, no, I'm I'm talking about you could actually just be in a different place. Yeah, because of the Neuralink. You I'm can, more interested in winning trivia. I am more interested in just, you know, just saying, hey, I'll be right back. I'm going to go, I don't know, play golf at Pebble Beach or go back to the 1980s and jump into the Playboy Grotto. I, I'm going to do all of that. I want to do that. So, because I have a Neuralink. So, yeah, I know it's co- going to cause the, the rise, of, but porn will be a lot better. It already is. There you are. It all leads back to porn. Every single time. Thank you, Tim. I hope so. Thank you, me. Thank you, you, for making us sound good. News and notes is where I search the world wide web for the weird. Internet. This far. And by God, I found it. Let's go to Nazis. Not again. I mean, this is like the first time we've ever been there, I think. I mean, but they've been around before. We didn't like them the first time. No. So you remember the uh, Edward Norton show, American History X? Yeah, I never watched it, but I'm I'm familiar with that it existed. So the guy that was Edward Norton, who who inspired Edward Norton's skinhead character in American History X, is an actual real human being. Yeah, his name is Frank Mink. Okay, sounds 48, like a Nazi. Forty eight year, forty eight years old, became the the leader of a violent ultra right group early in the nineteen nineties torturing enemies who stood in the way of his attempt to, uh, you know, egg on a race war and neo-Nazi stuff, right? He's had a change of heart since all of that. Because he realized the world wasn't on his side. He ended up going to jail, ended up meeting some friends that weren't his same skin color and realized, oh, hey, this might be a little wrong. Things have twisted a little bit farther on that for him. Because he did a, um, what was, which one did he do? He did the 23andMe test. Oh, no. He's Jewish. Oops. So now, now um, that he found that out, he's, he's now, uh, he's switched to Judaism. That didn't take much. What if somebody falsified the records? Just as a joke. You, you think they just saw his name? He's like, oh, yeah, no. 
<laughs> no, no, no. Here we go. Got him. Somebody at the 23 and me, they're like, hey, y'all, watch this. <laughs> so, but yeah, so the guy that inspired Edward Norton's character in American History X found out later through uh, the mail in DNA sampling that he's Jewish. That's got to be a little bit of a shock to the system. So it shocked him so much that he's now full time, full time Jewish. So there you are. There you are. Let's go from there to. Um, I don't know why you'd want to do this, but apparently, this kid didn't really like his um like his granny too much. No, everybody loves granny. Everybody loves Granny. Mima, Mama, whatever you call her. Everybody loves loves Granny. By the way, I call that band name. Uh, special thoughts, shout out to uh, to uh, my wife Sybil's Granny. Oh, just uh, she okay? Well, she she fell, hit her head, oh. so they're they're running her to the dock. Thoughts and prayers, Colby. Right now, um, ninety eight years old. So. It's probably 20, 30 years longer than I'll make it. More than likely. And it's going to be longer, too, for her because, you know, she's honoring. Of course. So, there you are. Is that where Sybil gets it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But let's go to this guy, Clifton Whitfield. And I don't know what happened with him and his granny, but it may just be the fact that he's, you know, he's just an ass. Um, he was caught. Entering his his granny's vehicle unlawfully and putting combustible material in her gas tank. Why are you trying to blow up granny? That's she, not a good way to go. That's I mean, there's. Luckily, she was he was caught, and granny didn't didn't go boom boom. Did but, he not like the twenty bucks she gave him for his birthday every year? Or just didn't like that chocolate cake or she missed a cake or missed a birthday i don't know what happened Jeez, nobody that's knows what aggressive. happened but that's real aggressive granny. And I, I see stuff like that and i'm just like i don't care what granny did uh-uh uh-uh i don't Mm-mm. and he probably needs to stay longer in jail because of it colby i lost my last grandparent when i was 14 so i don't really have like grandparents right like Right. After after that. I mean, and my parents were old already, too. So, I mean, they were 40 when I was born. So, that's kind of explains that whole thing. But, like, people that grow up and they have parents and, and their grandparents when they're in their, like, 40s and 50s. Like, to me, that's just, like, awesome. Oh, yeah. Like, that's incredible. Like, why would you blow up granny? <laughs> he tried oh. to unsuccessfully. Uh, let's go over to um, Carbon County. That's a place. <laughs> Probably does a like lot. Like there's of, a copy of one of those. Yeah. They do a lot of dating there. Um, <laughs> we went in very different directions we with really carbon. Did. We really did. <laughs> so, um, do you do you remember the movie Scream? Uh-huh. The ghost face yeah. mask? Yeah. That's involved here. The mask or the real person? The mask. Okay. As a man wearing a costume mask resembling the attacker in the scream movie he was actually wearing the ghost face mask hood and all that admitted to stabbing his neighbor in the head in Layton Vince Edwards Whitehead Jr. was pronounced dead at a nearby hospital in the Monday afternoon attack in the Carbon County community of 25 miles north of Allentown Whitehead was 59 Pennsylvania the suspect, 30-year-old Zach Russell Moyer, was taken into custody, admitted to have having gone to Whitehead's house next door for the purpose of scaring him while armed with a knife and a small battery-powered chainsaw. <laughs> Wearing a costume complete with a mask and black cloak, and he, he further admitted to just stabbing the dude. So you yeah. took a knife and a chainsaw? Yes. To go scare this guy. Full masked up. Huh. I'm telling you, I can't imagine my brain as huh. I see this guy charging me with a knife. And a, 
and a chainsaw. chainsaw and ghost face and full attire. It's okay. That's not a prank. It's it's now not a prank when I see that the things are real. Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh uh. I don't care. You shouldn't have done that. You got what you deserved. I'm getting you. He got him all right. But I mean, no, he. The guy that was wearing all that stuff is the one that actually yeah. stabbed the guy in yeah. the head. I just, I, straight out of every, like, after you've seen the movie Nightmare that you could have, right? Yeah, yeah. Just don't want that. It's like running through, like, a, a, you know, a forest at night and actually running up on somebody that's Jason Voorhees. So, like, murder charges? Yeah, because, yeah. I mean, it wasn't self-defense because he was the aggressor. Well, I mean, he was full on. Yeah. In the mask, had the knife, charged the guy, and then stabbed him in the head. So, yeah, murder charges. He went to his neighbor's house dressed like a killer and killed the guy. Jeez. So, I... There's got to be special, even more... Because charges that are brought. It's not just simple murder. Because also, that guy's last moments were... Completely scared out yeah. of the line. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's other things the DA will come up with. Hey, Probably well deserved. Tim, you shouldn't, you shouldn't uh, review stuff online. If, <sighs> Great. If you live in Nigeria, I'm gonna review this show. Because a Nigerian woman who wrote an online review of a can of tomato puree is a fa- is facing imprisonment. After its manufacturer accused her of making malicious allegations that damaged its business. Kamwa Akai. She's 39 years old. And um, an entrepreneur from Lagos is being prosecuted and sued in civil court. This is what she did. She went... To their version of, of Facebook, accompanied with a photo of an open can of the tomato mix produced by a local company and said, hey, um, help me, help me stop, help me find something else because this one is too sweet. <laughs> That's what she said. They pulled that post and said, you're going to jail. Oh, my God. Because of the malicious thing you said online. First of all, the fact that I think they're start, we're starting to catch on here to where, like, if you're too malicious online, that, like, charges can be put against you. Yes. But you, she's just like, this tomato puree is too sweet. Anybody got an, any other one I can try instead? They're like, nope, jail. So, jeez, I you know if I the I don't think I'd go online if I was Nigerian. No, because the rules are clearly different over there than they are here. Right, may not want to do that. Just may not want to do that. And finally, jeez. you you remember all those um, you remember all those times during Halloween where they're like, hey, make sure and go through your children's candy. Because there might be drugs in there. Razors, drugs, all sorts of stuff. It happened. No! Tammy Sigurder. Made up. Well, this is this is, uh, this is is in Winnipeg, so maybe oh, not made Canada. up. Oh, mm-hmm. Canada. Good day, mate. She actually gave out cannabis, accidentally gave out cannabis edibles to Winnipeg trick-or-treaters and is sentenced to... Five thousand dollars in fines. Accidentally. Accidentally. How does that happen accidentally? To had the wrong gummies next to the other gummies, I guess. Like you made yourself some cookies, uh-huh. and then you made cookies for Halloween, and then you got them mixed up. A woman who accidentally put cannabis candies in bags to hand out on Halloween after running out of loot for trick or treaters broke down crying. Said, "I just." I ran out of candy for the kids, and they kept knocking. What the hell, chick? Those so, kids went home happy, though, a bit. So the cur- court heard the cannabis edibles handed out were made to look nearly identical to the Nerds brand candy. And 
can't be bought legally or can't be bought legally in Canada. So they said nards on them, by the way. <laughs> so they were that close. Yeah. Instead of nerds, she was handing out nards and she probably gave them to the Wolfman because we all know the Wolfman has nards. That's news and notes, everybody. Jeez. Thank you, Colby, for your news and notes and for everything you've done for the show today, by the way. You've I, clearly carried us. I, I do want to say for those that actually got the Wolfman has Nards reference, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. How many do you think there are? Twelve. There's twelve. Twelve out of the twelve thousand watching right now? Yeah, twelve. All right. That's not a very good percentage. It's not. You should cater your jokes more to the masses. No, no, no. I let them know when there's a joke that just uttered that probably most of them didn't get. <sighs> the Wolfman has nards! Okay, well, now you got to explain it to the rest of us. It's an 80s monster movie where the kids are versus all the monsters, and they had, like, the vampire, the werewolf. What movie? Oh, you can't remember now, can you? It's a Quentin Tarantino Monster, movie? Monster Squad. I never saw it. Pretty sure I was too old for that. And the, one of the kids is screaming, kick him in the nards. And he's like, the Wolfman doesn't have nards. He's like, kick him in the nards. And he kicks him in the nards. And he's just screaming as the Wolfman. Oh! He goes, the Wolfman's got nards. And that's the only line anybody ever remembers from that movie. No, because nobody remembers the movie. Uh, we are the Colby Sapp and IndyCar Tim Show on a Wednesday. We'll be back on Monday with more debauchery, more nard jokes, uh -huh. uh, more shots, maybe with a bottle or at least a glass of whiskey for Tillman over here. Whoop, whoop. Uh, as, he, as, as we try to get him back in the drinking game, slowly but surely. It's probably not going to happen. As he's dwindled down to about 140 pounds. I am over there. sitting right under 200 pounds. It's actually start, it's time to start cutting back a little bit. Yeah, you need to cut back. You need more whiskey in your diet. No. That's going to do all of it. More whiskey and Red Bull. It's not going to do any of it. So we'll see if we can get Colby to drink whiskey and Red Bull next Monday right here on the Colby Sapp and IndyCar Tim Show. That's Until then, boys and girls, we'll see ya. <laughs>